Taking your resisted speed training to the next level could be as easy as using one of these and some simple multiplication and division. If you're an athlete or a coach who does speed training, but you feel like you're leaving some speed progress and some speed gains on the table by not maximizing tools like a sled or chains for resistance sprints, I'm gonna take you through my experiences as a speed coach and sports scientist for over three years. In this video, I'm gonna take you through a little bit of background about resistance speed training, as well as a super actionable and simple way to help maximize your resistance speed training. If you like this video, please like it. Subscribe if you wanna stay up to date with my content to help you take control of your speed training, maximize success, and minimize the wasted time. There are so many benefits to resistance speed training, hence why I'm making this video and consequently why you're watching it, such as increasing ankle stiffness, improving technique, and the most specific way to strengthen those sprinting specific muscles. And there are certain things we know about resistance speed training. So similar to how in lifting, you speak in terms of percent one rep max, in sprint training, we speak in terms of velocity decrement or how much slower, what percent slower you are compared to your best speed. And that's gonna be the basis of all of our calculations. So 10% velocity decrement, 10% VDEC, means that you're going to be running at 90% of your best speed. And this is called the technical zone, where there's some resistance, you have to fight it, but you're still going relatively very, very fast. 25% VDEC or running at 75% of your best speed is that speed strength zone where it's in between the middle of fast and heavy. Last is the max power 50% VDEC zone where you are running at half of your max speed. And this is awesome for really adding that power. It's that combination of just heavy enough to really be heavy, but also fast enough to where you're not completely weighed down. I'm extremely fortunate where I currently coach to have a 1080 sprint, so we don't do too many sled or chain sprints, but at places like colleges or bigger teams with more athletes, this is an awesome alternative method to help individualize and take that resistance B training to the next level. In general, when programming and doing these specific zones, the technical zone, 10% VDEC, is 20 yard sprints. The speed strength zone is 15 yard sprints and the max power zone 50% VDEC is typically 10 yards. Let's go over three examples, one of each velocity decrement zone, the math behind it, and how to turn it into action. So first, let's start with the max power zone, 50% velocity decrement. So let's say it takes you 1.8 seconds to run 10 yards. We take 10 yards divided by 1.8 seconds, and that means that your average speed over the course of that 10 yards was 5.66 yards per second. So for max power, we wanna run at 50% VDEC or half of our speed. So 0.556 yards per second times 0.5 for 50% means that we should be running at 2.78 yards per second. We have our goal velocity of 2.78 yards per second. And if we multiply that by one over 10 yards, because it's how long we'll be sprinting to get the yards to cancel out, that tells us how long it should take us in seconds. So 2.78 times one over 10 equals one over 0.278 seconds. Now to put seconds on top, you have to do one divided by 0.278, which leaves us with 3.59 seconds, which makes sense. If we wanna run half as fast of 1.8 seconds, which we did unresisted, then it should take us twice the amount of time, 3.6 or 3.59. So how this gets turned into action is, you pick a weight on the sled or however much weight of chains, you do a sprint and you time. If you are under 3.59 seconds, that means you were a little bit too fast, so put some weight on. If you were over 3.59 seconds, that was a little bit too slow, take some weight off. And it's this guess and check, it'll take you a few sprints, and then you pick the perfect weight to get you to run at that velocity decrement. Next example, let's do the speed strength zone. So let's say a 15 yard sprint takes you 2.6 seconds. So 15 divided by 2.6 gives us 6.25 yards per second. And if we wanna run 25% slower or at 75% of that max speed, we have to multiply 6.25 times 0.75. And that gives us 4.69. So the goal for these speed strength zones is over the course of 15 yards to be averaging 4.69 yards per second. So if that is our goal velocity over 15 yards, then we take 4.69 yards per second times one divided by 15 yards to cancel out the yards. 
and then we're left with one divided by 0 0.3127 seconds. And then if we do that, one divided by that, we get 3.20 seconds. So to be in that speed strength zone, 25% VDEC, over 15 yards, pick a weight that makes you sprint 3.2 seconds total. Last example, the technical zone, 10% VDEC. So let's say it takes you three seconds to sprint 20 yards. Your average speed over that 20 yards is 6.67 yards per second. And if we want to sprint 10% VDEC or 90% of that speed, we multiply 6.67 times 0.9, which gives us 6.00 yards per second. So that is our goal velocity. We do 6.00 yards per second times one divided by 20 yards, because that's how long we'll be sprinting to get the yards to cancel out. That leaves us with one divided by 0.3 seconds. So then we just do that to put the seconds on top. One divided by 0.3 is 3.3 seconds. So you pick a weight relatively light that makes your three second sprint over 20 yards take you 3.3 seconds instead. And that way you're at 10% VDEC. And that's all there is to it, relatively simple stuff. You figure out what zone you want to be in, what quality of sprinting you wanna work on, pick your distance, 10, 15, 20 yards, depending on if you wanna work max power, speed strength, or the technical zone. You time yourself doing a regular sprint, calculate the average velocity over that distance, figure out how much slower it should be, and then you pick a weight that makes you run at that time. So, simple stuff, good luck, run fast.